Yo, welcome to the long and short. There is blood on the street today. It's your boy Maestro. Thanks for tuning in. Every day we aim to make you a better crypto trader by showing you price action techniques and giving you some education on how to trade this crypto market. Whether you're a scalper, short-term trader, positional trader, we have plays for you. So, what happened last night? My goodness. I mean, price just completely dumped through the floor in the Asian session. I think I know why. Um, there's a lot of news on why Asia is very bearish right now, um, and it all makes sense. And I would say that if we want to play this market effectively, we have to take into consideration that there's a lot of macro events right now that are pushing price down. Russia wants to ban crypto. China's cracking down on OTC desks even now. They're going crazy over there. And in America, the sentiment is negative right we have a lot of things happening with the fed they're going to raise interest rates on us that's what they say up to five times this year apparently so all of this news is what is depressing the price all of this negative vibe that they're putting out in the world right now when it comes to monetary policy and everything else is depressing the price last night we believed that price would bounce off of 39.5. We did try to take a couple of trades here, which is why you see these arrows. We took longs, but we really didn't lose, even though price did come down on us. And the reason why we didn't lose anything was because we protected ourselves in the trade. All we did, once we saw price move aggressively towards the direction we wanted to, we just put a stop loss in front of our entry point. Asia definitely came in to push the price down last night. And we saw this happening. The trades that we took were at the 9 p.m. hour. As soon as price went up aggressively, it came right back down as aggressive. So even though we didn't necessarily get any really large positional wins out of this, we also didn't lose anything. We weren't sitting in a trade waiting to get liquidated. Okay, guys, we had a protected position. Either way that price went, we felt fine. Okay, so if price continued to rally, we would have made quite a bit. But if price didn't continue to rally, we would have lost, right, quite a bit. As you can see, the price continued to push down. So those long positions that we took last night would have been pretty bad if, in fact, we didn't protect ourselves. But as you can see, we know how to protect ourselves, guys. We're not going to lose money to this market. That's the way we view our trading. All right. So ultimately, price, where is it going to go for Bitcoin? Well, you have levels of liquidity here. This little circuit off area is the next level area that we need to pay attention to. You have areas of liquidity here. You have imbalances in price here, right around $35,000 mark. And the liquidity is sitting around under about 36, 37. Under that, you have another area of imbalance. And then you get to the bottom of the bottom of where we were back in May and June. That's right around 30K. This right here is showing us anyone that's gotten into Bitcoin over the past maybe year and a half, they may be in a loss at this point. OK, or getting close to being in losses at this point in their entire portfolio. And this may be anything in crypto. Pretty bearish, pretty bearish. The sentiment right now, I think, is definitely bearish. It's creeping down. If we look at the fear and greed index is sitting at 19. If we look at the heat map, everything's in red. This is completely demotivating for people. Even stable coins are red. Like I've never seen this before, guys. This is incredible, right? So when people see this type of stuff, they're like, oh, the entire market's going to crash. There's even more to look at that give you bearish vibes. Let's take a look. Okay, going into bar chart, 13-day EMA, boom, got rejected super hard, okay? So this 13 EMA has been pushing us down, okay? This is a reason to go short. The open interest is very high. There's actually articles that were saying the open interest was more towards the bullish territory that which I was anticipating from yesterday. But now, a lot of these guys are getting ready to get margin called if the price continues to fall. If anything, New York, okay, London, these guys need to be buying as much Bitcoin as they can because Asia, they don't care, guys. They're just sitting on crypto waiting to dump it. They're just waiting. As soon as the market opens, we're going to hang out for a little while. Hey, have our breakfast and our coffee. And then next thing you know, sell as much Bitcoin as you can. That's what those guys are doing in Asia. Okay. So if anyone's going to support this market, it's going to be the U.S. market. It's going to be the European market. That's all we have, guys. Okay. Maybe New Zealand, maybe Japan. But other than that, guys, we're getting crushed overnight and that's what's happening in price all right also the large speculators as we said they were creeping up to longer positions this is in the news as well right they were taking options longer they thought price was going to bounce as i anticipated that they were thinking 
they're playing the same game. But again, remember, larger institutions are still trying to figure out how to trade Bitcoin. They still don't really understand how to trade it. They don't understand it as an ecosystem, what cryptocurrency even really is yet. They're getting into this stuff and they're trading it and they're losing, guys. They're losing. Ultimately, if you look at the commitment of traders, they're still trying to go long here, but they're in bad position right now. Retail traders, they are coming off of the long position, starting to think more short now. OK, commercials are pushing off the zero line going short now. Still bearish to me. OK, guys, until these larger speculators really, really, really push up and they bring money into this market, you're going to have a problem. Um, when we look at the elder ray, bears have firm control. This is this level is almost as strong as it was at, at some of the peaks here. So bears have firm control of this market, guys. The bulls are not participating right now. They're not bringing a ton of action. They're bringing some money in, but every time they do, they're already hitting that price, okay? The, the sellers are there to meet them at whatever price point they want to buy at, whether it's higher or lower. If I can get Bitcoin for 38K, 37K, why would I buy it at 40K? Hey, you guys are selling it at 35K, 32K even, right? Selling pressure is still there at these numbers, which is why you're seeing the price depression, right? If people weren't willing to sell Bitcoin at 38,000, 37,000, 35,000, the price wouldn't go there. It'll go up. There's plenty of folks that are willing to sell it at these levels here, especially in Asia, because they were part of the mining crowd. They were getting into Bitcoin early. They were in the market really before we were. So they have the positions. Asia doing a lot of mining. They have the Bitcoin. They're sitting on the crypto. They have the ability to dump it on us. Asia does have a sort of a, a, a large stack of crypto that they're sitting on, guys, right? Even after all of this time, even after the crackdowns and things like that. So we have to be aware that they will sell it to us at price points that we may not think they want to sell it to us at, right? Think about it like this. If your country's having a crackdown on something and you have a pile of it, okay, you need to try to get rid of that as soon as possible, guys. And in order to get rid of it, you'll sell it at pretty much whatever price you can get it for, right? As long as it's not below your standards. This is what's happening in the market right now. Asia has a ton of Bitcoin. They're sitting on it. They're pushing the price down because they don't really care which price they sell it at. They're not going to wait for a higher price and sell it at that higher price. They'll take it at 36, 37. They'll take it at 34, 35 even. They'll take it at 30. I think that's the lowest they'll go, but they'll take it at 30. Where was the lowest area of price depression where even when Asia was dumping, they kind of stopped. It was around 30K, right? So if this is the climate that we're in, could we expect price to go to 30K? That really all depends on how heavy the selling pressure will be in Asia. Because I think at this point, the U.S. markets and the London markets, they're ready to buy. They are ready to buy. But Asia, as long as they keep pushing that pressure down on us overnight, it's not making that buying opportunity very lucrative for them. Just keep that in mind. Even though the money flow index is increasing, you are getting a lot of pressure. You're, you're getting that selling pressure that's meeting it right there. OK, so it's pushing the price down. The momentum is going down. PBT, OBV down. Accumulation distribution starting to flow more into the distribution phase. All right. So everything looks bleak, guys. Everything looks grim. Even when we start to go through altcoins, I'm going to show you guys how everything is kind of down there as well. Everything is creeping into your discounted zones there. OK, just wanted to cover a couple of things in the news. OK, when it comes to Bitcoin itself. All right. We see the percentage drops at the point of news release. Uh, Eight percent for Bitcoin, 10 percent for Ethereum. Even Solana and Cardano got dragged down to percentage uh, losses of nine and 10 percent, respectively. OK, so the entire market is down, guys. Right. Further continuation of this sentiment will likely see BTC trade in the mid 30s. Stack Fund said in a comment to Coindesk, 600 million in liquidations in the last 12 hours. Bitcoin led the liquidation pack at 250 million, led by Ether at 163 million and Solana at 10.9. Talk of the town this week is the latest jump in bond yields, most notably U.S. Treasuries, as investors continue to position for accelerated tightening timelines. Four rate hikes this year, possibly five. Well, if that's the case, right, people are going to put their money into things like equities and things like bonds. They're going to offer a better yield than really they ever have before. OK, and so if that's the case, then you will see money dragged out of things like crypto. Right. If bonds are a safer asset because we have economic issues, but we're going to raise the yield on those bonds, that means that we can get, make more money on those bonds. And it could be five, 10 year, whatever year bonds. Yeah, cool. Whatever. Right. That's where the money's going, guys. That's where the money's going. They're pulling it out of crypto 
putting it over there okay understand this is a zero-sum game the money is going somewhere people aren't just taking it and putting it in their pockets and saying bye bye crypto they're putting it somewhere safer because they don't know what's going to happen with these rate hikes people are looking for the safest option at this point right this move appears to have caught the market by surprise as option chain data suggests there's a significant amount of open interest stuck at 45 to 46 for bitcoin now this is what we were talking about in regards to options the other day we thought that the options were taking longer positions right based on the current price action in the charts and what we were seeing in the news we thought that they were long and this right here kind of confirms that for us right at 45 46 there's a lot of negative pressure lots of negative pressure right so if everything's bleak in the news we're seeing everything bleak on the charts we go to the heat map and even the the, the stable coins were trading at negative <laughs> right at one point right usdt is 99 cents everyone's selling guys everyone's selling i believe there's a lot of panic selling going on today people woke up this morning and said nope not having it give me my money I think that's what's actually happening. You're going to see this cascading event. And right now is really the time where you need to ask yourself, do you have the convictions to stay in this market? Do you believe that you have long term value in this market? If you do, then you're holding on for dear life. If there's going to be any market that explodes from negative depressed price action like this, it's going to be crypto. It's going to be crypto. The stock market does what it does. Okay. The Fed props up the stock market. The Fed is all in everyone's pocket at this point when it comes to stocks. Okay. If a company fails, the Fed's going to save it. If a bank fails, the Fed's going to save it. Okay. The Fed doesn't come in to save crypto. They don't. And so with this here, with this understanding, right? Are we willing to continue to play this game of letting the Fed affect what we're doing in crypto? Or will people hold strong? Well, people hold their positions and say, we don't care what the Fed does. That's the real deciding factor in this market right now. Bitcoin is going to be what it is, but the rest of the crypto market itself, the technology needs to start to come to bear. We need to stop trying to scam people in this market and rug pull people in this market and point people in the right directions rather than towards the shiny objects. If I had any issue with the crypto market, that's it. We point ourselves towards the shiny objects. We lose focus and faith in the things that actually matter. And then when price crashes and all of those shiny objects go out of the window, we wonder what happened to Bitcoin too. Partly our fault, guys. Okay. We're not projecting the proper messages out there to bring in the larger investors. Because if they go on crypto Twitter right now, it looks like a madhouse. If they go on crypto Instagram, it's worse. We, we can't attract institutions to this space by putting up a bunch of memes guys we have to be a lot more serious when it comes to this this is what i see okay we have to get a lot more serious about what we're doing here that being said let's go ahead and jump into some altcoins i know that's a bit of a rant but sometimes i have to do that all right taking a look at eth eth is also having the same type of price action that bitcoin is having dropping down into these order block zones but ETH seems to be getting supported here within this area I'm not going to say that that's going to hold, though. We do think that price levels will continue to fall a bit just based on what we were talking about in regards to panic selling, things of that nature. So be on the lookout below for ETH as well. Again, you still have imbalances and order blocks sitting below price here. And this is sort of a vacant no man's land where price may get held up a bit based on this current action here. But I don't think if we were to break below this 2647, uh, 2654 level, uh, you're definitely going to see more bearish activity after that. Same way that you're seeing it on Bitcoin. All right, we'll cut through altcoins pretty quickly. We always preference this part of the video by saying this is not financial advice. This is just how we anticipate and get into positions in this market. Okay, um, again, we'll call it out. The areas below are discounted areas where we like to buy. The areas above are premium areas where we like to sell. This is not financial advice. Again, this is just how we play the market. Taking a look at Dogecoin, you're trading at a discounted zone here. Definitely not a bad place to buy Doge, but consider the entire market. Again, folks, you're not just going to go into something because it's in a discounted zone. You want to make sure that the market is also participating with you, right? Worst part about trading is getting into a position and having no one else with you. The good part about trading is, is that sometimes you can get into that position and people will go with you. That's part of what research is about and sort of leading the pack. You know, I, I think about trading like this. We're all part of the herd, all of us. We're all part of the herd. 
But there's some people who leave the herd early and go in a direction and then the rest of the herd follows them. Those are the people who usually make the money in, in, in crypto or any investments. And so if you think you're going to be part of the herd and sort of leave it and, and lead the direction of a price movement, you have to have information for that to happen. Right now, I don't think that Doge has that type of momentum. Even Elon has tried to pump this thing multiple times over the past few months, and it's just not happening the way that it used to. And so if that's the case, I'm starting to lose a little bit of faith in Doge having positive price action moving forward, guys. So we may see lower levels okay, of accumulation here. And I think that we may even go down to seven cents if this market continues to drag. And I know that that's a number that most people in Doge thought they would never see again, unfortunately, right? Pretty tough. Let's talk about Chainlink. Chainlink is starting to trade in the discounted zone. And we think, again, Chainlink is a very strong coin to get into. As it trades into this discounted zone, we're going to pay attention to the market dynamics and what is happening over the next you know, couple of weeks. But if it sort of consolidates in this range, this is a good buy for us. I think even at this point, it's a good buy. We said anything under a dollar. 50 is a pretty good buy for Chainlink, right? And as you can see, it's starting to try to push its way up out of the zone. But based on the market pressure, I think that it will continue to push more into this discounted zone. And this is a good buy opportunity for Link. Store J. Store J is also a coin that we've been looking at. We said that it was accumulating pretty nicely within this zone, but it is starting to drop down into a lower discounted zone, which does give us a better buying opportunity for Store J. We are patient, waiting on a lot of this stuff to materialize. And so once it does and we see market structure broken to the upside in these lower zones, that's positive action that we want to see for continued price movements up, right? But really, we're waiting for this to drop somewhere below below. Really, we're waiting for this to drop somewhere below $1.20 before we get in. For Filecoin, again, trading very low and even lower into the bottom levels of the discounted zone. Now, if this does break the discounted zone lower, okay, that's probably the most opportune time of them all to buy. But if you want to look out below because <laughs> price could definitely crash very hard at this point, okay, um, if it were to break below that discounted zone. I am not sure if there's enough money in the market right now pushing in the file coin to really give it any real positive push. So not the best buying opportunity for file coin right now based on the fact that the entire market is being dragged down. If this were normal situations and there was money in the market coming in, coming out and normal trading was going on, then I would think that this is probably a better buy. For engine token, engine is in the discounted zone, trading a lot lower here, okay? Like, some of these metaverse tokens are being smashed very hard, guys. People that got into these things at the top here, they're being affected, and things are coming down here. Um, we did take some profit in our premium zones for engine, and we left some runners in. So, we're not affected as bad, right? But we're starting to get to the point where we're breaking even on engine token. If it does go lower into these discounted zones then we will definitely be starting to stack up a bit more on engine. I think there is a, definitely a future for this coin here. Algorand, looking at Algorand, the price is in our discounted zone as well, starting to creep a little bit lower. But Algorand is a very strong crypto. And I believe that if it were to reach these levels, even touch or kiss the bottom level of the discounted zone, the second one here, I think that we will be going in as well. But we're going to be patient and wait for this as well to buy more Algorand. For the graph, the graph is also trading lower, right? We're seeing that these lows are usually supported for the graph. So I think that this is probably the most opportune time to buy the graph if, in fact, you are getting into it. But don't take my advice. I am not a financial advisor. This would be what I would do. We already have a pretty substantial piece in this, so I'm not really looking to improve on my bag right now. But this is a good place to buy the graph, in my opinion. Curve Dow starting to break down into that discounted zone. So we did take some profits on Curve Dow in our premium zone here. So as it continues to push down into the discounted zone, we don't anticipate it being here long. So we will probably start to take a little bit more dry powder and putting some of that back into Curve Dow if we see the price start to break a little bit north after the discounted zone is taken. All right. And then Cardano, Cardano again, lower discounted zone being traded here. I do think that Cardano will push. I sat on their Sunday swap call last night on Twitter um, in, the, in the Twitter spaces. Pretty good information there. I think that they did have some congestion on their network. They need to clear that up. There was a few traders that had issues with their trades. They need to clear that up. I think their system needs to be a little bit more transparent on what's happening with the swap and what people can see on the swap. Um, but other than that, they seemed very 
excited that this was going on in Cardano and that it's improving, that there's actual utility usage here that uh, people could take advantage of. So I think that Cardano does still have some strength here, but they need to clear up some of these issues that they're having on Sunday Swap um, in order for that to really, really kick off. Other than that, I would say that Cardano is still a good buy sitting currently right now at $1.20, which is very, very low compared to where it's been. Looking at Polkadot, also trying to creep itself deeper into the discounted zone. And we said that Polkadot was also consolidating very nicely in this discounted zone. But if it does break lower here, I think that we do have the ability to push higher out of this zone for sure. So this would be a good buy on Polkadot. For Shiba Inu, Shiba Inu creeping deeper into the discounted zone. And I treat Shiba essentially the same way that I treat Doge. If the momentum isn't there and the buyers aren't coming in and there's no real reason to get more of this, guys, and there's no real utility that is being brought to market, then it doesn't really matter what the tokenomics is for this. It's going to continue to fall. And that's what we're seeing here. OK, so again, Shiba Inu is something that to me is a bit more interesting than Dogecoin at this point. But again, I need to get in at lower, lower, lower levels here in order for me to really be convinced that this is something that I want to get into. OK, so it's starting to creep to those levels. Let's see what happens when it comes to Matic. Matic also falling off of previous all time highs. I would still wait for this to creep more into the discounted zones. It seems like everything has the possibility to go there at this point, guys. Um, just based on what's happening on a macro level, you will start to see more of these discounted zones for all of these cryptos that have been going on runs, right? Look at what happened with the metaverse tokens. They're just getting crushed. They're getting crushed, right? Let's talk about XRP. XRP is also in a discounted zone, creeping more towards the lower discounted zone. Right now, XRP is always seems to be supported by this level here. OK, you can see a bounce here. You can see it doesn't stay below this level long. So if it does drop below, say, 65 cents, I'm definitely going to get a little bit more XRP on my plate. Mana definitely still creeping its way back down. Right. We're starting to see these metaverse tokens see some effects here. If the market's being dragged down. They're going to go with it, guys. They're not exclusive. OK, so things are getting pushed down at higher percentages. Right. And this is what you want to pay attention to, which markets are being affected the most, which ones are losing the most. Right. Um, those are sensitive markets. So in a discounted zone, I think, man, it is still a definitely a good buy. Finally, let's talk about Harmony One. Harmony One coming down didn't yet break the all time high. It came down off of it, starting to creep more into the second premium zone. And I think it will reach the discounted zone. If it does reach below 20 cents, we said in the previous video that Harmony One would be something that we would get into. OK, so what I would say, guys, is that you do need to be patient. You do need to be careful out here. The bears are here. They are here and they're not going anywhere. And I think that people will start to panic sell if we see any more depression in price. I think that lots of folks are ready to just hit that button at this point. OK, and you're not to be blamed for that. It's not wrong if you want to get out of your position because you're uncertain of what happened. But for traders and guys like us, we're degenerates. We're going to take whatever opportunities we can get. Right. Ultimately, very tough day. I would say hold your convictions if you are in crypto for the long haul these are the days that you're going to have to deal with um for people who have just gotten in i understand the frustration you got in at points where you thought price was going to continue to run and it didn't run for everyone that's traded crypto that's been in this game for about two years a year and a half these are the bear market type of days that you have to live with in order to remain vigilant <laughs> in crypto with that being said, I think we're going to end the video for today, guys. Thank you for tuning in. If this is the type of content that you're looking for in regards to crypto information, please go ahead and subscribe. We will continue to check in pretty much on a daily basis. We're doing shorts now. Um, we'll be showing positional trades. We'll be showing you what we guys. We'll be showing you guys what we're doing in the background as well, right? So, like, subscribe. We are definitely trying to bring a lot more content and tutorials to play here within the next coming weeks. So. Salute. It's your boy Maestro. Thanks for tuning in. It's the long and short. We're out of here. Peace.